Hello, welcome back to How to RPG. Now, you can see before you Dark Heresy, which is a role-playing game. You can see Star Wars Saga, also a role-playing game. Uh, this is Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Yes, that's Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, uh, first yet edition, the player's handbook. I have pretty much uh, all of the player handbooks now, so that's always nice. So this is where I kind of show you everything behind the scenes. And, uh, and kind of, uh, we talk about role-playing game mechanics in general. That's really what this is all about, okay? So I'm going to put up a poll, ask you a question. Feel free to take part in that, uh, that poll. Uh, I have talked about this before, um, this poll. Uh, question has been I put, put forward. It's often very unpopular, uh, but I, I'm still going to bridge the topic today. Not in a lot of detail, but there will be some detail around it. And uh, so make, make sure you have some food, some drink, make sure you are comfortable. I'm also going to talk about different dice rather than just a D20 today, okay? Uh, so that's sort of where my head is at with what's going to happen. Anyway, let's uh, let's rock into it. You, you're, I'm sure you're ready. You've got your food, your drink, you're comfortable and you're ready to chat. So let's do some, let's do some chatting, shall we? Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Weller and this is where I talk about role-playing games. Today is mostly about and focused on the concept of tabletop role-playing game, game, game mechanics, like the basic mechanics of a game. Not necessarily combat and not necessarily other elements like spells, but in general, the, the very sort of the, the rudimentary dice mechanics of a game or the rudimentary mechanics of a game it doesn't necessarily mean we're using dice. Um, a role-playing game doesn't mean you need to roll dice, in fact. But uh, what I thought I would do is today I would go through the chat and, and chat with you um, as I do this. I have been showing people my Google documents for things that I've presented in the past. I'm going to continue to do that and I'm going to show you my Google slides but I'll also be writing some stuff as I go, and um, I, I'm certainly open to people presenting some of their experiences. If you've played different types of role-playing games, I'm all for that. I will be talking about, if you're if you're wondering, I will be talking about, and, and in the future this will include demonstration, okay, because that's what I normally do on my channel. Uh, I will be talking about ability checks, okay, or... Um, uh, skill checks, I'll be talking about attack rolls and saving throws, I'll talk about all of that. I'll talk about advantage and disadvantage for 5e and, and how they are, a lot of these mechanics are utilised in other game systems. They're just maybe called something slightly different, okay, for the sake of avoiding winding up in court. Um, but often that probably wouldn't be in court anyway because you can't really copyright that sort of thing. It's just the way you express it. So... Let me get straight into the, the meat and potatoes of today, which is I want to go straight over to my little working document and show you what I have so far. And then I want to talk, the two things I want to start off with are using different dice rather than a d20, okay? Because often we just sort of revert to let's just use a d20 for all resolution, which is fine if you're very much a gambler and that's sort of the sort of game you wind up with when you're, when you're using just a d20 dice. But six-sided dice, uh, eight-sided dice, ten-sided dice, very common. Uh, I kind of talked about this before in the past, but we'll we'll do it again. Okay. All right. I think I'm ready to transfer over to show you what I have at present. Okay. So this is the Google document that I've been working on. And as you can see, it's uh, it's got a few holes in it. I've, I've removed a few things, so there's a few things that need to be adjusted. Um, I will flip through the slides very quickly. Okay, uh, the intention is to actually get onto the Google document rather than slides. The slides will update. Okay, all right, so I've got an overview which covers all the things I just discussed. I've got objectives, we'll skip, skip, skip this. I've used the tomato analogy for ability scores, which I'll explain later. Ability checks, how they are made. Skills, and this is where we're pro I'm probably going to expand this a little bit because a lot of game, uh, um, game systems use a lot more skills rather than using ability or attributes. Uh, and that's it's sort of dependent on the system. For example, Dark Heresy uses skills rather than attributes. Uh, how to make a skill check, what that kind of looks like, pretty much the same no matter what you do. Uh, saving throws for a creature, whatever it is, how that's done. Uh, we'll look at some uh, 
the attack roll for different type of attacks, um, your attack roll and how it's done. Again, it's usually pretty easy. Uh, difficulty class or target number. <coughs> Um, you could even call it difficulty number. Uh, this is this is a concept that's used by many systems. Contests and how they sort of look in armor class or armor defense or defenses will co cover that as well. And then um, advantage and disadvantage or these are both mechanics. These are reroll mechanics, okay? And then some miscellaneous. So what I want to do is I want to go straight over to my Google document right now. And so I'm going to work backwards today. Rather than working forwards, I'm going to work backwards on the topics that I had in mind. And you'll let me know your opinion as I go. So <clears throat> if you're sort of unsure what to do with a game mechanic, I've always said to people, have the character roll a 20-sided dice and add the result to an ability modifier that seems to relate to the action of a creature or the character that they're trying to perform like you just pick one of those the ability check is probably one of the easiest ways to deal with anything okay now whether that's an ability or an attribute modifier completely up to you um, it doesn't if you if you're having struggles with the idea of a, a modifier it's just a bonus it's that's all it is attribute Uh, ability or attribute modifier I'll put bonus here and I'll put uh, modifier in brackets <clears throat> how's that sound that's probably better uh, there we go right now there's another aspect to any kind of game mechanic and this is where you don't really use dice where you know if you're unsure what to do what's the, the simplest way to resolve something like that and that is resolve a character or monster's actions without dice and base it on the merits of the action presented to the game master okay and this why you do this is one it reinforces planning and well thought out decisions by players okay that's what you're trying to do so it's not just a game of chance yeah, presented to the game master Oops, there we go. <clears throat> Those are probably my two key takeaways when it comes to miscellaneous recommendations out of everything I can possibly think of. The next thing is um, let's deal with different dice mechanical resolution. Like with a D20, you have, you have one system, um, and that is a, a one is a failure, really, if you look at it, well, one is a failure. Now, some systems don't work that way. Some systems don't have, if you roll a certain number on the, on the dice, there, there's no failure. It depends on the what happens to the number once you get modifiers or bonuses added to it. Uh, what I'm going to present to you is what makes sense if you're going to roll dice. If you're going to roll dice and you can't fail, why are you rolling a dice? This is one of the things where where I, I sort of struggle uh, with some of the things that are presented in Dungeons and & Dragons and 5e in particular because it doesn't do this, whereas it probably should. So, for example, um, I'm going to take my glasses off. And we'll do this for a uh, d20 and give you sort of the numerical um, d20 dice. Um, I'll sort of show a uh, 20 side of dice. We'll do this for a, a 10. Uh, is there a 12? Yes, there is 12. 12 uh, sided dice. And I'll give you the appropriate range that you would be working with. Um, a 10 sided dice. Uh, <clears throat> a um, 8 sided dice. Dice. And finally, a 6 sided dice dice now you're probably thinking why have I not included a four-sided dice to this equation and the reason is four-sided dice really isn't a real dice that's it's just a four-sided dice is um, a, a caltrop <laughs> designed to be stood on and hurt you <laughs> and they never roll particularly well they are out of all of the the dice available to you in the in the game is like it's the strangest dice of all right 
And look, you can get other dice that are outside of those ranges, but I'm just going to present those. I think the most useful dice that you can utilize is a six-sided dice. But there's actually a couple of other things we can do with this, so I'll come back to this. So the range, so a, a 20-sided dice to to resolve uh, a chance of success, a chance of um, success um, to resolve a action. Uh, would use a now a target number of 1 to 20 that's really where your, your range sort of sits with a 20 sided dice you can go higher of course um, but what I'm talking about with regard to the dice is what you roll on the dice uh, sort of determines what is sort of success and failure. So a roll of of one is failure and a roll of twenty is success. Whether they are critical or anything like that, it's really completely up to you. What I all I'm all I'm trying to present to you is if you think in terms of the dice, not with the modifiers it makes sense that a 1 is always failure and a 20 is always success. Now if we apply the same concepts to different dice, it kind of follows that they work in the same way. Uh, let me just give you a, 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 here we go, an action, okay. Uh, so a, a potential range of um, uh, target numbers numbers will be uh, 1 to 20 plus. Now the reason I'm putting 20 plus is because you would have modifiers. Now you could possibly potentially in a game system have negative modifiers, uh, but that, that doesn't change the upper range. That just means that you kind of, want, if you get less than, than 1, but that's really what you're looking at is, is a range of like 1 to 20 plus, yeah? A potential range of target numbers would, would be 1 to 20 for a final um, result. Result, 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 including bonuses or penalties. It actually makes no sense to, to track penalties right beyond one. If one is going to be uh, like, you know, if you're going below that, your range is kind of weird, if you know what I mean. Okay, so so this is that concept. So all the stuff, all I'm going to do is I want to take this and show you what the range would be for each of these dice. You probably already guessed. Um, the time that it will change is when you're using multiple dice for your resolution. So let's, um, I'll just copy this, drop this in here, and change the range so you can see what it would be. Paste two. To resolve action, the target numbers would be, for this, it would be 1 to 12. And if you're rolling a 12-sided dice, it makes no sense, again, to not have it mean failure. Because otherwise there would be no point in rolling the dice in the first place, Okay. And then uh, rolling at long at 20 would not apply in this case. It would actually be the 12. Because if you're rolling a 12-sided dice to resolve something and you're going to add modifiers, if you can't succeed by rolling the 12, then there's, there's no point having it. So you can see I'm transitioning the same concept across. Remember, if you're rolling a dice and you're trying to succeed and you've asked them to do this, then it would be no point in rolling it unless the 12 can actually give them a good result. Otherwise, you wouldn't bother. So the potential range is here in this case, because you're only rolling one dice, would be 1 to 12 plus. Because we're, we're adding bonuses and penalties as well. So that's your range. That's how it works. So I'm just going to cut and paste. You kind of, you're probably starting to get the, the gist of how this looks. Um, so let me just quickly transition these all over, do the um, adjustments for this. 
uh, and and then I'll show you what it looks like if you're dealing with rolling more than one dice. So quite common is to roll two six-sided dice for resolution rather than just one, like you would roll two die um, two six-sided dice. Or um, for those of you who are familiar with a D10 system, you would roll two ten-sided dice for your resolution. The great thing about rolling two ten-sided dice is you can kind of duplicate a, a D20 system Kind of, but it, well, it looks a little bit different. All right, so um, 10 success, 1 to 10 plus, and I'll do this again. Just give me a second while I just change this in. So for the eight sided dice, again, it would be 1 to 8, 8. Um, Yeah, it's failure, and the eight is the success. And then uh, the this is eight plus. So you're dealing with a different range. The smaller the numbers get on your dice, the the more important the bonuses become. If it's not obvious now, the smaller the dice that you use, the number of sides it has, the more important the um, the bonus becomes. It should be obvious, right? So if you're playing something like Fate, which uses pluses and minuses, it means that your bonuses that you get for Fate when you're doing anything are quite significant. So a success would be the six, and we're six plus here. There we go. All right. Uh, now, there's one other thing I wanted to add here, and that is um, I wanted to take this here and change this. I'm going to do this and I'm going to just copy and paste it so it's clear. Now rolling whoops so rolling um, two ten sided dice to resolve an action uh, would use a target number. It looks differently when you're using two ten sided dice. <clears throat> I don't know of too many systems that use two 12-sided dice. You could, but I'll, I'll, I'm going to put the example of 10 and a 6-sided dice when you roll two of those. So your number range, because you're using 10-sided dice, means that if you roll snake eyes, one on both dice that you're rolling to resolve this, that should be the failure, because it won't be one now. It's now two, okay? Two, two. Now, what's the total number you can get? You can roll two 10, so it will be 20. Yep. Does that make sense? So that means that rolling um, two ones is failure. Uh, a roll of two ones is failure, and a roll of two tens is success. So your potential target number range, once all the results are added together with your bonuses and so forth, looks different again. So your range is now 2 through to 20 plus. So if you ever decided you wanted to get you wanted to sort of flatten the maths out and get rid of the uh, a little bit of variation in your 20 sided dice, use two 10 sided dice. You can use two 10 sided dice and uh, it would work with uh, 5e or another dice system that uses a d20. Just because you just get you're eliminating the one, so it means that you're only dealing with two and up at that point, really. So make sense? Okay. So let let me just do the same thing so you can see what it looks like for a six sided dice, and then I think that's that point already covered. Then I think I've covered that well and truly after that. Uh, let's see here. So rolling, rolling two. Whoops. Let's try to get that right. Rolling two, six-sided dice to resolve an action would use a target range of, should be obvious, if you're using two six-sided dice, the lowest you can get is two ones, so that would be a two, and the highest result you can get by just rolling the dice is a 12. Yep, okay, so rolling <clears throat> two ones again is failure, and rolling uh, and a roll of two 
sixes is success because that's the best result you can get otherwise you would not bother rolling the dice it would make any sense right okay so a potential range of target numbers would be and this is different because remember you're rolling two dice you can't get anything lower on the dice than a two if you have a bonus of zero and then your highest numbers are going to be 12 and up okay including your, your bonuses and your penalties so that's kind of what it looks like if you start using different dice in your game that's sort of the that's the sort of the way you'd look at it so easy enough for you to port over any of those ideas into your game if you really wanted to okay you don't have to use a 20 sided dice oh the chat's very quiet today okay <clears throat> uh, so there was one other thing I wanted to say about this and uh, for the life of me I can't remember what it is if I remember what it is I'll come back to it okay so the next thing I wanted to talk about was diceless role-playing games before I sort of go so as I said I'm working backwards today on this um, so there are a bunch of games out there that don't have dice as a, a resolution mechanic they use something else uh, and I think that's quite interesting. I think it is actually an aspect of the game which we may see transferring itself over to other games over time. So, for example, Dungeons & Dragons started out where you really wouldn't roll that many dice. Um, or the people who were rolling the dice weren't necessarily the players. It was actually the game master or dungeon master. And over time, more of the dice rolling has been um, done by the players and less by the game master. Uh, unless, of course, you're home brewing. Yeah. I'm here just lurking. Osric, Osric the Dwarf, well thank you for letting me know that I'm not alone. You can lurk away. Okay, so what I wanted to do is, and actually maybe I'll put this in chat for those of you who are interested. Let me know um, what, uh, what diceless mechanics do you know know of and uh, role playing games and I'll put this in hello Noroak I'm just listening as well not a problem Noroak you listen away while I do the talk and, and, and type How the, how's that sound alright so diceless mechanics so I'm going to present to you a, uh, a suggestion and see how you respond to this. I have never seen a system necessarily use this approach, um, but I'm still going to present it. And you'll let me know if you, you, you like the idea or not. But don't worry, because I'm going to present a couple of different ideas before we get into D20 dice rolling. Okay. First one is um, the resolution. Resolution of a character, character's action, is determined by the um, Game Master, who decides how difficult Difficult the task is to complete successfully, and it is compared to a static number or so static numbers, they are a thing. Um, I've kind of presented this idea before where the resolution of a character's action um, is determined by the game master who decides how difficult the task is to complete so you decide how difficult it is in advance and then it is compared to a static number uh, the player character has so <clears throat> how would you play a game like this you're probably wondering well that doesn't make any sense well what if you want to... so what you do if you're playing a game that looks like this is as the player 
what you want to do is you want to make sure that the things that you're trying to do are within your scope, okay? So you don't present outrageous tasks that you probably can't achieve. So that you, what you're doing is you're trying to figure out, okay, I want to do this. Does it seem to fit within my character's static number that I could pull this off? And what is my dungeon master likely to, or my game master likely to adjudicate under these circumstances? What are they likely to rank that as? So you, you, you're, you're doing it two ways. You're looking at your static number and you're looking at your game master and what you know about them and how you think that they will judge it. And so the game becomes more like that, which is there's still a certain degree of um, gambling taking place because you don't know the final outcome of what they will decide. Um, but it also means there's a lot more consistency you know, one of the benefits of doing this is there's a lot more consistency. It's one of the, this is a, this is a game rule I will be continue to present uh, to people over and over and over again. Not necessarily as the only game mechanic to have in a, uh, a role-playing game, but maybe as a, a, a way of eliminating the, the giant variations that you can get off a D20 dice roll. Does that make sense? Um, if there's anything that I haven't sort of, if I've, this idea is not explained well enough, you let me know and I'll continue to sort of open it up and I'll, 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 I'll make it clear if I haven't. Um, if I need to write it down so it's clear, let me know. Um, what's that, Norok? Uh, sounds good to me. It's, it is good to listen uh, when I am crafting, making a leather backpack. You're making a leather pack backpack, cool. So far, I have succeeded my roles. Well, or maybe maybe it's not that you succeeded on your roles. Maybe it is that your static number was your your actual skill and ability to do this. Um, you haven't taken on a task that's beyond your ability to perform. Maybe that's what's going on. That's entirely possible, is it not? I think it might be that. Okay. I'm just going to just put this into italic. Pardon me, people. Okay, right. Next. Next one. The Jenga Tower. Has anybody ever come across the Jenga Tower? I, I've never played a role-playing game where I use the Jenga Tower. I've played Jenga for sure, yeah. But I've never played with the Jenga Tower. <laughs> um, and I, I've seen people do it, and it's quite interesting. So the resolution, the, um, the outcome of success and failure can be determined by pulling one brick from oops brick from from a um, Jenga block tower Tower to now this is it's designed to build tension and it also rewards <laughs> a steady hand. Uh, yeah. So it's an interesting way to look at the game. So if you wanted to build tension. Then pull it, say every time you make a decision to do something, okay, you've made, this is the action you want to do, well now you have to pull a block from the Jenga tower, and of course, the more and more and more you play on, the harder and harder it becomes. Um, I think it's a very, very interesting concept. Yes, nor statically good, I knew it was, I knew that was the case. How many of you remember or know of part of the history of Dungeons and Dragons? Because um, <laughs> there's a funny thing here with regard to combat resolution with original Dungeons and Dragons. If you go right back to when Dave Arneson was testing it, uh, because ultimately most of the work was written and was done by Dave Arneson in terms of uh, testing initially and developing it, and it was written down by Gary Gygax. So... One of the things the Blackmore group, who originally did the testing with Dave, Dave Arneson, uh, is they used 
scissor, paper, stones to resolve con conflicts. And it was around combat. So, uh, resolving a character character's action as a competition uh, between sorry, between the game master by playing scissors rock and stone uh, scissors rock and paper paper what's that called scissor paper oh god lord now have i got it if i got it around right is it scissor paper rock stone double, ah good lord here we go let me let me just do a search here for the life of me i can't remember <laughs> i don't know why um, paper scissors and rock game um okay so it's rock paper scissors that's what it's called rock paper scissors thank you very much rock paper and scissors now they didn't use this method for resolving conflict and they only used it for combat Okay, so it wasn't used initially for anything else other than combat, but then they uh, did eventually move on, and they used a few different methods apparently. So I'm going to put this forward as you could use scissor rock. Um, um, you could use, oh, am I saying rock? Rock paper scissors. Rock paper scissors. Rock paper scissors. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Nora. Yeah, I got myself all mixed up there. Um, so there's a, a little bit of skill involved, but the type of skill that you're using is completely unrelated to your player character. It's, it's completely down to skill of the player, which you'll find um, a lot of early D&D &D is really, it's the skill of the player that's important. It's not the um, predetermined or assumed skill of the character. Um, so the character itself is simply a reflection of the player. You know what I mean? Okay. There's another one too, which I've seen, which I thought was amusing, and that is um, uh, the consequence, consequence of a um, character's um, action is made by is oh hang on is uh, the consequence of a chara uh, character's action is flipping a coin like you literally it's just a 50 50 chance you flip a coin and that is it <laughs> which is which is quite acute I, I have to say when I thought about um, uh, this and I saw what people were doing it really came down to it could it could go either way you just you know you there, there wasn't a lot of variation involved you, it was you have a 50 50 chance of success or failure which is a, a kind of an odd way of doing it, but it, it's out there, right? Okay. Uh, action is, is, um, what's the weird, what do I want to say here? It's determined by flipping a coin. So there is a 50% chance of success. You either succeed or you fail. One or the other. Arm wrestling to succeed. I haven't ever seen it. Have you ever seen somebody use arm wrestling in a role playing game? I thought it would be, I mean, I think it's interesting. I think it's a, it's a, it's certainly, you know, Okay, so um, there's another one, and I don't fully understand how it works, and that is around play, playing cards. Um, <clears throat> uh, and I, I've never played a game that used playing cards in this way, where you just use a normal deck of cards to determine sex and, success and failure. I don't know how that concept works myself. 
But I want um, playing cards to determine. Success or failure of a character. Characters um, um, act, task, or performance. Okay, so those are the things that I wanted to kind of um, point you in the direction on. Uh, in, in the direction of, and just see what you sort of thought. Um, I'm going to make a note of this. I've never seen it. If, if anybody is not aware of a role playing game where they use arm wrestling, <coughs> uh, there's another game system. I think it's called Ten Candles, but um, I don't fully understand Ten Candles, so I'm probably not going to talk about that today <laughs> since I, I have no, I've never seen anybody play it. I've never played it myself, so I'm not completely aware of how that works. But these, these I do. These, these I understand. <laughs> these, these I can deal with. All right. Um, so what I think I will do is I would just take a, make a slide up here and chuck it in um, of this. I wonder if I can just do that the easy way. Can I do that the easy way? Copy. And I'll just present a couple of new slides. Uh, yes, that's right. And paste. And I'll just tag in the two things that I wanted to say. Where is, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Closest, closest, there we go. <clears throat> uh, okay, I wanted to go diceless role-playing game mechanics. Followed by different dice. Okay, there we go. So different dice. Dice uh, for, yeah, what is it? What did I say? Different dice for something. For resolution. Okay, so this is going to be nice and simple. We'll take that out, and it is a... Um, D20, D12, D10, uh, uh, D8, and we're going to have to make this a little bit smaller because it's a bit too big. Apparently it's not going to work either. Let's try it again. Okay, D8. D6 and using multiple multiples of dice. Okay. And there. Alright. And then the other one, and then I want to move on. And we're going to talk about Advantage and disadvantage. I'm going to talk about 5e advantage and disadvantage, and then I'm going to talk about what are ultimately advantage and disadvantage are trying to do. Okay. Uh, diceless role playing game mechanics. There we go. That's what I wanted. Diceless. Um, diceless game mechanics. Okay. I don't think I get role playing game mechanics in there. No. Diceless game mechanics. There we go. I'll put that in. Diceless game mechanics. Let me eliminate all of this uh, and shrink it down. It's going to be a bit too too big. And backspace, and this is now the first one I had said I mentioned is um, static numbers. Um, character numbers. 
the next one I believe I had mentioned was um, oh, rock, paper, scissors. Scissors. Uh, was it flipping the dice next? Flipping a coin. Yes, there we go. A coin. And what's the next one? Flipping a coin. Um, oh, the Jenga Tower. There we go. Jenga Block Tower. And I is that what I wanted to put in here? Cards. Ah, I'm going to mark down the cards one. I don't know playing cards. I don't actually know enough about this one. Playing cards. Um, but I'll, I'll put it in. So that's all I wanted to put in there for that. Now let's these these here I was talking to Mr. Welsh and a bunch of other people there a little while back and we were talking about game mechanics and what works what doesn't uh, you know what you can use what you can't use and so advantage and disadvantage are things that you've come across in 5e right so advantage being that you roll two 20 sided dice and you take the the highest result off those dice Okay, and then disadvantage is you roll two 20-sided dice and you take the lowest result off those those two rolls. Okay, and this applies to whether it's an ability check, a saving throw, or an attack roll. Um, an ability check also includes your, um, say, skill checks. If you're using skill checks, I'll, I'll add that in as well. How's that? Skill checks. Uh, checks, checks, come on. Get it in there. Checks. Skill. Checks. Now, one of the first things you might have already discovered when you look at something like this is these these mechanics have been around a long time. If you've played enough over time, over the years in different systems, you'll be familiar with the fact that these aren't new. They're actually quite old. Um, and they are just they've just been worded in a particular way that's all that that's going on here so the most common and what Glenn had said to me which is mr. Welsh he has a YouTube channel um, and I, I I didn't I didn't actually think about it but it, it was obvious and that is that um, reroll mechanics which is essentially kind of what this is a reroll mechanic is the most common way to deal with giving somebody a bonus or a penalty so re it's essentially all it is is a reroll mechanic that's all it is where you you might instead of having one dice you get to roll you roll two dice now whether that's going to give you a penalty or whether it's going to give you a benefit is sort of beside the point in some cases it might be whatever the other dice you roll you you'll take that number and it will be deducted from whatever you get rather than it, it you know you take the lowest on the dice or the highest on the dice hi Ryan how have you how are you how are you doing? I've been debating using 2d10 and an attribute um, die. Basically use 2d10 and a, a d4 instead of, of plus 1. Yep. A d6 instead of um, plus 2 and so on. And so so Ryan, you probably find that if you are using something and playing something like 5e or frankly any version of Dungeons and Dragons that has got any kind of d20 dice roll involved you can swap them out for two 10 sided dice easy you wouldn't have any real big problems now the other other thing that you're talking about which is adding another dice instead of having a, mo uh, a numerical modifier um, that would be different again uh, certainly that would change things up because you'll get even more variation at the top and the bottom do you know what I mean and and the bottom at the bottom the variation at the bottom is not as bad as the one at the top. <laughs> does, that, does that make sense? Um, but if you're wanting to have a game where you want to roll a lot of dice and have as few static modifiers as possible, I mean, I don't know how I don't know how it will interact. But honestly, if all you do is just change out the twenty sided dice with two tens, you'll be you'll be fine. <clears throat> Uh, what do you got here? Uh, the only non-dice system I am familiar with is Monster of the Week. It is more of a narrative-based game. 
I quite like the flexibility of that system. Okay, so if, if anybody's played Fate, um, Fate does use dice, but there is a time when you don't use dice. You use your Fate points. And this is kind of how it works. And I, I, don't, I didn't actually describe Fate points because it's been a while since I've played Fate. So I wasn't entirely sure if I'm correct. And if there's somebody in the chat who's played Fate, put your hand up and say, yes, I've played Fate. And uh, Fred, you're wrong if I've, I've got this wrong. But this is how I understand it. It's a compel. So based on your aspects, um, kind of like a game master and, and the game master and the player can kind of do a compel. When they want to use the point and they, they want something to happen, there's not going to be any dice roll involved. The only way to counter that, it's going to happen. If they put down the fate point and say, I want this to happen. The game master's only respond, um, response to this is if they don't want it to happen in the game, then um, they have to spend a fate point to stop it. And they only get so many. Is it that right or is it something else? I, I feel like I've got it out of, out of whack. There's something going on here that I've missed. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll come back to that. I have to, I have to check on the rules around fate. It's been how many years? It's been, oh God, it's maybe 20, is it 20 years since I played fate? <laughs> oh God. Now that I think about it, it's depressing. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, but yeah, what you're sort of suggesting is kind of like fate, where it's very narrative and there is dice rolling, but there's actually very little of it going on quite often. It's an interesting way to play, I have to say. Okay, so now back to advantage and disadvantage. Um, I, I, what I want to do here is I, I still want to retain the, the 5e sort of saving throw thing here. I don't think I'm going to ditch these, if you were wondering. What I thought, though, is I might refine this a little bit and, um, and give you something a little bit more to feed off and I'm uh, uh, I, what was I gonna say it was um, it wasn't really like a re was it a re-roll that I was gonna say re-roll 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 I suppose the easiest way to do this is actually just to talk about re-rolling re-rolling dice okay uh, the re-roll dice mechanic if anybody needs me to explain how uh, advantage and disadvantage works in terms of their interaction, you let me know and I'll, I'll do my best. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that I'm going to wind up, wind up having to talk about 5e at some point. Okay, it's, it's, it, no matter how much I dislike the idea, it's, it's kind of why people come here. And since I'm supposed to be here to do all of the games, I might as well, right? How's it going, Spirit Wolf? How are you? Okay, so reroll mechanics. Uh, oh, actually, I probably should add this. Advantage does not stack. Um, and disadvantage doesn't stack. Copy. Paste. M D M D five E. Okay, I didn't actually add that when I did this program way back when I was doing this. Much to my surprise, um, this much does not stack. M D M D five E. Okay, and um, uh, so actually, what I want to do is I want to make a, a second line. Sorry about this, people. What do you got here? Dice on the floor don't count. Reroll. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look, talk about um, rerolling in a second. Just give me a second. I need some more water. I'm getting dry fast. I'm talking a lot. That's probably part of the problem because I'm talking so much. Slightly confused more than normal. Ah, okay. All right. So now. Um, if you have, um, advantage, 
and disadvantage on the same a D um, same twenty sided dice roll in five E and D in D five E they cancel each other out. It is a really elegant way of dealing with the game. When you when you when you look at the the fact that you could wind up with having bonuses here, there and everywhere, little plus ones, plus twos, which is, you know, if you look at enough game systems, they do this a lot. They're one of the real sort of backbone of what makes the 5e really really nice is this it does create problems there are times where you feel like you should have a better chance of success because you have multiple occasions where you have advantage um but then it begs the question do you do you do you get rid of the kind kind of the idea that they cancel each other out if you have disadvantage and advantage yeah it's one of the my favorite aspects of 5e has got to be the advantage and disadvantage system and, and you'll probably find that I'll talk more about like variants that you could do with something like this and I'm going to talk into re-rolling in a second. An hour behind? Against confusion. All right, well I'm glad you're, you're not confused. As long as you're not confused, we're in, we're in a good place. <laughs> um... I was just looking at this and I do I want to actually add in um, advantage doesn't stack I never actually said this do I want to say that though I don't know I suppose I could it's one of, it's one of those times where I'm like hmm is it really necessary I probably will I'll put that in how's that sound I'll put it in And then um, advantage. Uh, doesn't stack. And we will shift it up. So it's a little bit more where it needs to be. And I'll do the same thing here. Uh, actually, it might just uh, copy this bit. And... Shuffle this up and then paste disadvantage, which means I've got to make it smaller because it's too big. Uh, that's probably better. Here we go. <laughs> Does confusion come in a bottle? If so, get me two. Oh, okay. Do you only get one advantage dice? <laughs> well, it, essentially in 5e you only get one advantage um, advantage dice, but hey. <laughs> and then um, let me just put in the, that last, that third thing, because that, that sort of finishes advantage and disadvantage, doesn't it? And... Um, Having advantage and advantage cancels them out. Come on, it's not going to do it. Oh, this is two two L's. That that is wrong. And make that smaller. Okay, all right, happy with that, right. Uh, copy. And then paste. And then here, this is reroll dice mechanics, game mechanics, reroll game mechanics. Uh, 
Okay, there we go. Why is it saying that? Is it does not does not like that for some reason. Oh, fine, do that. Getting upset about nothing. There we go. Right, sweet. And let's go back to the Google document. Reroll dice mechanics. <laughs> so remember, so um, reroll dice mechanics are the most common role playing game. Um, rule applied applied to um, applied to um, up, um, up, okay hang on reroll dice rerolling dice sorry rerolling dice is the most is the most common role playing rule applied um, applying. Applying um, benefits and penalties. Pen penalties. Penalties. So, if you've played Star Wars Saga, you'll be aware of it. If you've played, um, uh, oh, what is it? You can even have reroll um, dice mechanics in um, in fate and uh, percentile dice chances, uh, percentile dice um, games. They also do this as well. D sixes commonly there is a reroll dice uh, mechanic involved. <clears throat> so reroll dice mechanics and. Um, why would you use them? So you uh, you use reroll a um, res 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 solution dice to avoid having um, a positive. And negative uh, numerical um, modifiers to add to a um, dice roll test. That's really the the reason to have re-roll, is it? People also like rolling dice. So that's one of the reasons to have it, um, but also people like mo rolling more dice. Um, more dice in a role playing game. It's, it's funny. If you if you expose people to a game where there's less dice rolling, I've seen some players who love it and some players who hate it. But as a general rule, most of the time it's why it's why you see more and more of it in um, Wizards of the Coast and other um, game systems, is because the the market research they do indicates to them that uh, whether you're a player, not so much if you're a game master. For a game master, rolling more dice is actually a headache because it creates more work, it takes longer. But for players, in particular, they like rolling more dice in a role-playing game. It's just one of those things. And part of the reason is the is the gambling aspect in your brain. Your brain is set up um, chemically to stimulate you. And when there's a chance of success, it doesn't have to be money when you're gambling. Um, your brain is set up so that it's it's triggered. It triggers the endorphins when you get something that is a reward. And a reward is often as simple as you succeed. And it doesn't matter what you succeed on. Your brain is set up and wired that way. And, um, and that's why 
That's why video games are set up the way they are. So you're always getting a little reward every time you do something. The more you play, the more you're rewarded in some way. And a bad video game would not be set up that way because it would not sell and nobody would play it. Um, if you've got a role-playing game, the same thing applies. The more times there's that chance of success and failure, the more it taps into that sort of frontal lobe and the desire. It's one of the reasons why I can't play video games. My just my life would disappear. I'm, I've got a very sort of addictive personality, unfortunately. How's it going? Prepare, cook, and survive. How are you? Is it the top of the hour? It is. Yes, yes, engagement. Yes, you, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, rolling more uh, dice does engage the players more in the game. The other aspect for doing it is um, it's simple. Uh, Re-rolling um, dice mechanics are simple. And you can roll, you can write a gazillion different game rolls around re-rolling dice for various abilities. You can re-roll this. If you separate them enough, <laughs> uh, you can have a re-roll for a saving throw, for an attack roll, for a, um, uh, what do you call it, a, an ability check, an attribute check, um, a skill check, whatever it might be. And then, of course, you can also have a re-roll that gives a penalty as well, that you can impart a penalty on somebody. So there's opportunities for the role-playing game um, market to to really capitalize on selling you more stuff around re-rolling stuff. It's really, really silly, but it's true. Um, I'm going to disappear for a second uh, and I take the, my break as it's top of the hour. I, I, what, I, what I've done is I've done what I wanted to do with advantage and disadvantage. I want to transfer a lot of this here into the slideshow, which I probably should do before I forget. And then I want to move on to another thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to present you with a question. <clears throat> How to resolve a dice mechanics. This this here, I'm going to sort of go over um, uh, really briefly with you. Okay. you Most of you already know this. It's not new to you. You're probably very, very aware of this. Um, what I want to know is hashtag what dice mechanic don't you like? I bet you you don't have one. I suspect that there isn't a dice mechanic you probably don't like. There'd be very few people who have one that they don't like it. Mm. <clears throat> so that is my question to you. While I just transfer this in, you have a think about it. Is there a dice mechanic that you don't like? Uh, common. Uh, dice is common. Uh, what's the other thing I wanted to say here? Avoid, <coughs> avoids numerical, uh, numerical, numerical. Why can't I get this right? Come on, numerical, numerical, uh, modifiers, mod modifiers, that's probably the easiest way to say it, modifiers. Oh good, we've got some people who've got some advantage and disadvantage. So Fred Hubber hates advantage, disadvantage. Fred, I want you to explain why. I want you to explain why you dislike it. If you have time, if you're willing. If you don't want to, then don't. People like rolling dice. Roll dice, okay. Roll dice. And what's the other one? Um, <clears throat> rolling dice 
engage as players. And what's the other one? Ah, yes, simple. As simple. Spirit Wolf, bottles of confusion for everyone. <laughs> D30s, it's like rolling a golf ball. Yes, I, I understand. Anything beyond a, a D20, I always find frustrating myself. Okay, I'm going to disappear, take a quick break, come back, and um, work through the rest of this. <clears throat> we're doing all right. I actually kind of feel pretty um, confident right now about what, what, what we were at. Uh, by the way, I won't be doing this like this again. Um, we will be covering an actual rule system. Um, the next time I do basic mechanics, it will be actual rule system. But anyway, I'll be back in five minutes. Put down your ideas, present them, and I'll be back. Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, am I comfortable? Am I in the centre? Who knows? Let me just get my glasses back on. Uh, almost ready. Almost ready. Yeah. Here we go. Right, so we could go straight back to my work, um, workplace, but let me just read through the chat quickly while I'm, I'm looking at what you've got here. Uh... Noroak, I actually like advantage and disadvantage. I love the idea of uh, character succeed and succeed against the odds, or having a better chance of success if it if it is something they can and they are good at. Yep. Okay. Prepare, cook, and survive. Uh, getting two nat twenties as um, disadvantage is a blast. It's I've seen it happen, and, and it's it's kind of devastating for players um, uh, initially when they see the the first twenty show up, and then that rolls the other one shows up, and it's a twenty as well, and it's like it it was meant to be. Right. 
You like how players always try to get advantage when it doesn't make sense. Yes, that's definitely a thing. Um, things that bug me are rail railroading or poorly written predictable adventures. Is, is that a dice mechanic we're talking about? I feel like that's a design of adventure thing. I'm, I'm fine. I, I don't like poor adventures myself, but the question is around dice mechanics. Um, Osric, don't buy official Wizard of the Coast Adventures then. <laughs> dice mechanic. I dislike a roll for damage. I tend to use averages because players uh, take a while to roll the, the result. So one of the, the dice rolling mechanics that I have always found myself that I, I get annoyed by is I'm fine with rolling more dice for damage. Okay? Um, and not all the time because too much of it gets really kind of silly like if you wind up rolling more dice for damage it gets silly but there's also another aspect to this and that is um that i don't like and that is when you get to re-roll damage dice so if you roll a one or a two it's quite common you if you roll a one or a two on a on your damage dice you get to re-roll it we, we know what we're you know what i'm talking about you've seen it before I hate those particular re-roll dice roll, um, re-rolling aspects for damage. I'm fine with it for sort of like an attribute or ability check or skill check, a saving throw, an attack roll. I'm fine with a re-roll for them. But when it comes to damage dice, I always despise them. And the reason I despise them, I suspect, is because it follows the same mantle of let's make a whole lot of playable options that really have no distinct f f flavor or um, um, creativity behind them and they were totally unnecessary simply to sell you another splat book. It annoys me a lot when I see that sort of thing. And um, fortunately there are not a lot of them st sticking around but the there is a tendency when you run out of the other four or five dice rolls that you would make is to start moving into the damage dice. And I, oh, I don't like that a lot. Um, I have a question before I continue, which I should I should not let myself get distracted by this. But let's get real. What what else am I really going to add to this today? I mean, I, I can um, tidy it up as a, a bit, uh, I mean, uh, and I will. But um, I have something, and I'm, I want to ask you, um, and maybe I should ask you in the chat. I think I should ask you in the chat. I got sent something, and I have not had time to open it. My, my schedule is so crazy f busy right now. So I actually mentioned this in, uh, in my stories section. I, I got a package sent to me. It's in cardboard. I feel like there may be some bubble wrap in there as well. I don't know what it is, and I don't know who it's from, um, because there are so many people sending me stuff. So I guess the question is, do you want me to open the package now? <laughs> uh, since you hung around for an hour, do you want me to open the package now? So um, have you ever played a dice for role playing game? Yes, 31%. No, 54%. Interesting. Not sure. Eight. Just watching out of 13 votes. Let's end that poll. Okay. So I'm going to, for those of you who can comment, just put a comment and say, yes, open the package, Fred. I'll put that in. But I'll also put the poll in as well. Okay? That, that gives you time to decide. Hashtag. Do I open the package? Because it is, I mean, it's essentially, it's a, it would be a, a, a huge... Because what will happen is if I open the book, we want to have a look at the book, won't we? If it's, it's probably books. It might be something else. There's supposed to be a lot of stuff coming my way. Um, do you want me to open the package? Uh, and I will put that there. And what? Yes. I feel like there's going to be so many people in the chat who have already said yes. Or, uh, the, the poll won't mean very much at this present time. Undecided. Uh, just watching for those people who don't want to be making a decision. 
Here we go. I'll put this poll up. Make it available. Do you want me to open the package? Right. There are currently nine people in here. So out of the nine people, what have they said? Okay. So one. Okay. I think okay means open the package. Spirit will fright. Fred says always open boxes. Not if you have no time like Fred. Fred has literally had to sit on this. Because I knew if I opened it, I would want to look at it. Um, is it is it ticking? No, there's no ticking coming. Open it with caution. Open it with caution. Osric has said open with caution. Uh, Norok has said, oh, well, uh, well, packaged that is. Bubble, bubble wrap. Yes, it's bubble wrap. Okay, all right. Green light. You want to green light this, Phil? Okay, so that means open the package. Noroak is saying it's it's yeah, open it. Okay, so that's that's five. Global product and game review. It's not a it's not I don't I don't get the feeling like it's trap or anthrax or anything like that. Cars detect traps. No way. <laughs> Question: If you were playing lot um playing um paid loads of money per week, would you be a full time dungeon master? No. Because it would kill me. So I, 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 I've had people sort of ask that question. Why do I, do I not run games? It's because it just kill me. It, I've, I've done it before. It's, it's really, it's not actually that pleasant to do for a length of time. I've done it for a while and then like, you know, I, don't, I wasn't getting paid, but I ran a lot of games. And that's just, this is the problem. It was, it's not what I would want to do. So, okay, we're opening, it looks like we're opening the package. I... I <laughs> <laughs> there's enough people in here that have probably said, yeah, it's time to happen. We'll open it. So <clears throat> for those of you who are hoping we're going to get something done on the topic for today, it's probably not going to happen if I open this package. It's probably over, baby, but we'll see. So transition. Uh, here's the package. And uh, this package came through without being torn to shreds. Much to my surprise, <laughs> I, I was expecting something really bad to have happened. And I don't honestly know who it's from. Um, anyway, let's let's see if I can get it to open without making any mess. And I need to be careful about this bit here, don't I? That's better. Okay, we've got that done. So you, all of you have been like, can you cover this rule system? Can you cover that rule system? So people are sending me more and more stuff, um, which I really do appreciate. It's, it's nice that people do because then, because <laughs> I probably wouldn't be able to cover it. It's, it's not really practical to just go and buy a whole lot of books. I don't make that much money. And I think I know what this is. Holy shit, it's big. Okay. Oh, well, he'll be pleased. I know what it is. And I know who it's from. This is Esper's book. Here we go. So this is Esper's Emporium of Eso Esoterica. So a 5e compatible book. It's it's a really meaty looking book. It reminds me of the um, the monster books that Cobalt Press puts out, which I have to say are pretty impressive. It's from you. <laughs> it's from <laughs> global global product game review. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure this this was actually sent to me. I'm I'm almost completely sure by um, Esper Esper the Bard has a YouTube channel. We were doing some uh, building around um, characters uh, yesterday, correct? So, and we'll probably do a few more as well. Well, I guess now that we're here, we have to open it and have a look inside, shall we? I I'll do, I'll be quick. Oh, he's done. Oh, look at this. This is cool. It's one of the, my favorite parts of doing YouTube is um, meeting people that I know I never want to meet again because there's a few people on YouTube that aren't that nice, but Esper is not one of them. Esper is awesome. Um, and I'll be playing in a game with him very shortly. He's managed to 
convinced me to come along. Nobody has so far. He's the only one. Um, so what do you got here? Fred, thanks for uh, organizing all of the roundtable chats. Right. With the little hat. He's even drawn my little hat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, all right, let's 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 flip through this fairly quickly, and then we better get back to work, okay? We'll, we'll have a look through it real quick. This is not a review, people. This is a contents page. 343 pages. Oh, my God. What have you got in here, dude? You've got, um, is, is he a vampire? He probably is. I know he stays up late. So Paragon, Ambition, Fate, Paragon Spellcasting. Okay. I'm not entirely sure. Is this a is this a is this a class? It is. It looks like a class you can play. A Paragon pl um, class? Myth of the Sovereign. Myth of the Trickster. Sentinel Devotee. Uh, what's, what is that? Second level wonders. Wonders. What are these wonders all about? Are these supposed to be like feats or something else? Are they just wonders? I'm very curious now as to what we're dealing with. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm kind of curious. There's different levels of wonders. They have prerequisites, some of them. Not all of them. So the, this is a, this is a very nice looking book, mate. He has he's 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 not skimped, and the the spine is well constructed. It's a big book. He's obviously gone to a lot of trouble to make sure everything is going to come out all right. Class options: barbarian. So he's got a barbarian. He's doing the monstrous stuff right now. So this is what is this? This is the. Does that say cleric? It says cleric. It does say cleric? Okay. Uh, fighter, monk, I am partial to a monk, warlock invocations, races, okay, so he didn't, he hasn't covered everything, he's covered what he's, he decided he liked the idea of making something for, some different stuff, so that's just around dwarves, so you've got a few feats there, there's rather a lot here, spells, oh my god, we started spells on page 51, how many spells are in here? You like the artwork? I have to say, um, some of the artwork I like, some of it not so so much. But uh, I'm kind of I, I haven't had a chance to really look through it. All right, so spells. There's quite a few here. Cloud of wasps. What's it? Edict of law. Fungal bloom. Really? Um, hell from the nether world. Reduced to rust. Okay. Starfall. Uh, tree Sentinel. Sheesh. Water Shell. Uh, game Master Advice. So here's an adv a Game Master Advice section. Oh, well, at least the entire book wasn't full of spells after that. So we've got a bit of everything. Um, <clears throat> removing the problem GM from yourself. Ah, removing problem players. Not really a topic that I like to go over myself because I always feel like it's up to um, adults to make adult decisions rather than for YouTubers to tell them how to do be an adult. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But, uh, okay, so he's got a couple of things there. Items. These look like magic items to me. So he's got a bunch of them here. Um, Staff of Psyche. Sombras. What is that? Oh, okay. So there's a few. Cursed and flawed items. Oh yeah, that's more my thing. Give me some curses. And they, some yeah, they're definitely magic items that are cursed. Flawed items as well. I'm assuming that that's kind of like an artifact. Traps and hazards. Oh, so she's he's included a few, uh, a few. Barbed net trap. Okay, that's that's I haven't heard of that one before, but it's it sounds sounds cool. What else here? Bone Pillar. Uh, the Bone Pillar, w Wally DM did the Bone Pillar just recently. He's, he's made a video on the Bone Pillar. Spell Obelisk. Man, he's included a lot of traps and hazards in here. Shatterstorm. You know how you hardly got anything in the Dungeon Master Guide for 5e? Uh, well, he's made up for it here. There are a bunch. I'm still going. Okay. Skill Encounters. 
So for those of you who are aware, this is, I would suspect, <clears throat> uh, a little bit like the, uh, the old skill challenge. Um, and you know I run skill challenges on my channel as a, a game master preparation um, program, right? I actually show you how to make them. We make these things. Um, animal encounters. What do you got here? I want cloud of wasps. It's a, it's a great to dive enemies. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. Yeah, no, no wasps uh, and and guards together. <laughs> what what are the wasps are on foot? Foot. So complex skill encounters. So instead of calling it a skill challenge, he's called it an encounter. Because we had that discussion when I was um, doing this is to to dissect myself from D and D. How do I call it something else? And yeah, I suppose encounter is one way of doing that. Um, arena combat. So he's got a section on arena combat, and he's provided a map of an arena with some optional arena rules. Magic shops. Okay, for those of you who have to contend with magic shops, he has included something. It looks like they're uh, the proprietor and their shop, their traits, a little bit of artwork for them. Nicely done. I'm not even halfway through the book. Good lord, he's still going. There are a few here. Oh my god, that has got to be AJ. That's that's AJ Pickett. Highland Spot, that's 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 AJ Pickett. If I, yeah, that's definitely AJ Pickett. I can't believe he stuck AJ in there. Ah <laughs> uh, dear, beastry. Oh, so he's got some monsters. I was told he had monsters in this book. I was wondering, lucky, do you have monsters in your book? And he said, yeah, I've got lots of monsters in my book. <clears throat> uh, Belmont, Belmont, the Bog Lord Frog. Really? There's a few constructs here. The the artwork does keep getting better. I I've noticed this myself. You you're right, and I I feel like it's probably because it is monsters. Esper is a, a monster fiend mate he i think he understands the idea of monsters he did a video talking about like um, you know his sort of experience with monsters and nightmares and so forth so dragons now more dragons oh there's more dragon stuff here okay blob what the heck is that i've uh, uh, there how many more monsters are, are we going to keep going i guess we are we're only up to E. Does he go all the way to Z? <laughs> he might well, he could well have gone up to Z. <laughs> uh, dear. Hard, that looked like a nightmare to me. And there's a, there's a bug. Ringworm. Oh, good lord. Real ringworm is terrifying in just too many respects. So to make it a D and D monster uh, or a role playing um, game monster is, yeah, yeah. You, you don't have to spice it up, baby. It's it's bad enough as it is. Okay, so this this book has got esoterica, but this is a monster book for sure. There are a lot of monsters in here. I was I was like, hey Wally. How many monsters are in his book? And he said, oh, there's quite a few. I was like, okay. The Ragman. So this is why um, Esper is so hard to get hold of, because he's, he's constantly working on this stuff, and it takes him a long time to put it all together. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. There's a few here that look like leeches. I don't even know what half these things are. It's kind of hard to sort of make out what you're dealing with here. Okay, we're up to V. Okay, this, I think we can say at this point, this is definitely primarily a monster book. It's got a bit of this and that and so forth, but it's a monster book. General NPCs. Okay, so now he's got NPCs. I'm probably less excited about general NPCs myself. The Bronze Warrior, okay. A Jupiter Spirit, what the heck? That's a uh, that's a tree. 
Okay. Is that a tree? Per supposed to be a tree person, soldiers, zealot. Named NPCs. Oh, he's he's got some. Oh, I see what he's done. He's expanded on here some of the NPCs that he's presented as as characters that you could use. He's given you stat blocks and a lot more information on. It's a book of some kind. Did he do a stat block for uh, for AJ Pickett in here? I'm um, now now I'm curious. I don't think he did. I didn't think he statted him out. He's just got a piece of artwork on him. And some this looks like villains of some kind. Oh my god, there he is. There's my buddy. Um there's AJ. AJ is a an actual character that you could um, you could have in your game. AJ Pickett. <laughs> so this is definitely a monster book. Tell me, did you did you put this together, dude, as a having it like a, a proper index? So that's monsters monster list by monster type with challenge rating listed beside it to save time. And then what have you done here? Monster by environment. No page numbers though. I don't see page numbers. So in the contents page. Do you, do you make it easy for us to find all these monsters, or is it going to be a pain? No, the contents page is the index. Which is good. It, it sort of eliminates the, the need to worry about having a contents page and a, uh, an index. So you use up less space. I, I'm actually quite fond of people who do that, when the index is actually the contents page um, all in one, combined. It's, it's efficient. It's a good idea. I like that. It's great. That is an impressive book. Where is Fred's character? Uh, no. Look. Um, Esper and AJ Pickett know each other, have known each other for a while. I am new, I'm the new kid on the block. Okay? It's, that's the reality. New kid on the block. A small fry. A small fry. Um, not the same sort of thing going on there. <laughs> uh, uh, so you're probably going to see that book showing up a lot in the future, people. You're probably going to see it a lot. So I, I suppose we should get back to, to business. Uh, let's. So I opened the book. You now know. We've got uh, Esper's Emporium of uh, Esoterica, which is a... Looks, okay, so I will do... Le legitimately, I will do a review on the book. I'll do a, a live stream and I'll do an edited video for it at some point. I, I think it's definitely worth doing so. I said I would, um, <laughs> and you'll probably see it showing up in my in my live streams a lot more. <laughs> uh, we need all the round tables add characters. Well, that might happen. Who knows? Who knows? It it really depends. We are going through um, our own problems right now. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it is. Um, the the beginning of the year the OGL stuff and Wizards of the Coast really did mess everybody up a lot and um, yeah so I won't say anything more you 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 get the gist of it you know what I'm talking about all right so rolling I've done the rolling thing I've got that down simple dice mechanics done that done that armor class uh, so let's go here I probably should break this down into why why am I why am I confused what's going on here? Oh, this is dice res resolution mechanics and I have listed it I've got a slide here that has the two different things here. But I have not I have not put it together in such a way. Okay, so so this is just a separate this is a separate job. Sorry, sorry, sorry about this. Um, and it should be called armor class and armor defense. Armor class or defense. I think that's what we want to do. Um, and uh, I would just do a little quick adjustment. Like so. Armor. Yep. Defense. Okay. 
I'm not I'm not American, so I'm I'm going to go with uh, the language that I actually know. <laughs> Otherwise, I won't be able to do anything in my own country. <laughs> Question: Did you see um, Esper's um, Eldritch Castle series on YouTube? I did see it. I have not had time to watch it. I I, I have watched a couple of his things. Right now, nowadays, I, I kind of struggle to keep up with everything. I don't actually watch a lot of people's stuff on YouTube anymore. I just don't have time. Um, I don't, I don't know what is going on. I have been in hibernation. You have no idea what you've been going on. Look, I've been all over the place today. It's been a little, a little bit weird for people, I'm sure. So, um, attack rolls are compared to the target or creature's armor class or AC. Any attack roll that is, um, is is equal to or greater than the target's armor class is a hit and less than a, uh, um, the armor class is a miss. Okay, so um, what I also want to mention here, and I didn't make it completely clear in the slide, but I'm going to make it clear in my notes, and that is that um, um, defenses... Oops... So defenses or armor, sorry, armor uh, can be um, descending or ascending. So defenses or armor can be ascending or descending, um, but generally uh, people understand um, ascending armor um, more easily. There's a reason why Thaco did not stay. The, it, the reality is that people got confused. And so ascending is probably, in my view, one of the, the best things they've ever considered. Because game rules are fine as long as they make sense to people. And if there's too much of a dissection and there's too much abstraction going on and it's too hard for people to understand and too hard for them to integrate, Th um, Thaco was one of those things. Um, so, yeah. I just thought I, I would mention that. <clears throat> uh, this is D&D &D 5e though. And this is D&D &D 5e as well. All right. All right, so that's that one. Um, and I probably want to go over here and I want to put here armor class uh, I'll just leave it as armor class for now uh, contest did I explain the contest contests contests uh, good lord what do I do here Let's undo that. That was a mess. Oh, I see. It's is it? That's forty. Competitions. I think that's what I really want to say. Okay, cool, cool. Um, contest competitions. There we go. This is what I wanted. This is this little bit here. Competitions. Contests and competitions. And this is that. Uh, let's take this. And I will take out that. Bold it. And we will just go number it. Okay, um, <clears throat> so, so, 
so so the contest and the competition is uh, they are commonly used commonly used in many role playing games it's very very common to have a dice mechanic that is a contest or a competition if you look at uh, what goes on in a lot of them they 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 use it all the time that's why that's why you'll find that D&D has them because um, there's only so many ways you can look at something, you know. But that's that's one way of seeing it. Okay, uh, next uh, difficulty class, and this is this one here. Um, I think what I'll do is I will push this down a bit and get rid of that. Backspace, so uh, this is difficulty. So with difficulty class, nice and simple, you get a target number, your ability, skill check, saving throw, it is compared to a DC or a target number, and as long as you hit that number, you get equal to or greater than, you succeed. Um, and if you get less, you fail. So nice and simple to adjudicate, or target number. Um, I'm actually going to put difficulty in the, uh, I actually think in some respects that the words um, difficulty number would make more sense to people than the word difficulty class. Uh, but it certainly makes you stand out a little bit, doesn't it? Okay, so let's get rid of this. Let's put this here. And is this going to go down? Yep. And then it'll go across. Oh, come on. So for some reason, it's not wanting to do what I want it to do. Um, or number. Okay, good, got it. Um, this is all 5e stuff. Uh, do I need to make, yes, this is 5e stuff as well. Actually, do I even need to say that? No, I don't, because this, this this mechanic in itself is used by so many people. Um, attribute. Attribute. And skill checks. Okay. Uh, so this is... That's fine. Uh, this is definitely... So the concept of difficulty class target numbers and difficulty numbers, that's not new. That concept is very, very common. But this here is very... The, the scaling that they've got is definitely D&D 5e. Because if you look at other games, they will have a totally different scaling. Okay. The scale uh, for... Um, other role playing games will be different. Okay, all right, I've got that down. Um, pretty happy with that. Uh, attack roll, modifier. The word modifier is confusing. Every time I see the word modifier, it is. It's always confusing. Um, and I am I, I every time I look at it I always feel like I need to change that <laughs> I can't help myself uh, it's it's probably a result of too many years of yeah I don't know what to do with that I'm gonna put a question mark there um, uh, actually what I do is I'll, I'll take this out with it there okay so dice um, mechanic uh, resolution, resolution uh, can be, 
can be um, put a target number number dice competitions contests contests and what was the other one um, did I miss anything it's really it's the same so even the arm class is, is like a had a target number Okay, that's all I needed to say there. Okay, attack rolls. Uh, I'm going to put down here modifier bonus, bonus bracket modifier. Um, clean that up a bit. Question: um, How about a meeting in New Zealand for you and your subscribers? It's probably not going to happen. My life is way too complicated at this present time. And I don't know if it'll ever get any better. Um, I just don't have space to. Uh, it, it, it's it, If I tried to explain all of the chaos in my life, it would be too much. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know what else to say. I think what I need to do with this attack roll stuff, though, is attack rolls to hit the combat. I'm referring to 5e here. This is not going to be in the front. I'm going to cut this. I'm not going to ditch it, though. I'm going to put it at the bottom. Paste. Okay. Um, bracket. D&D &D 5e. Uh, next bonus and I'll put modifier there in brackets I think the word bonus is a, is a better use the word bonus modifier I'm just going to put bonus Okay. No, <laughs> that's not what I wanted. Get me pretty much where I need to be. Okay. There. Oh, this is just rearranging things. Why am I doing this? I can do. I can do this some of the time. I'm f oh, now. I'm fluffing around, fluffing around when I don't have time to be fluffing around. So leave that. That's fine. So, but I want to put the word bonus attack roll. Or test. Uh, let's do that, and then uh, creature attack rolls. These are all covered. I'm pretty happy with that. How that's looked, looking. Um, here we go. Attack rolls. Uh, so that that doesn't change. That applies to anything. Um, this is proficiency bonus stuff. This is this is definitely 5e when you're dealing with proficiency bonuses. So we go here. This is um, D and D. 5e and um, okay that's fine da, da, da. I think that's fine okay I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that I just needed to rearrange it I'm happy with that that's cool uh, I should be going and I haven't and I uh, <laughs> saving throws saves saving throws and saves uh, I think all of that can sort of stay I think it, 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 everything that I've have here is sort of lines up with what I had in, intended in the first place skill checks I don't think any of this other stuff is actually things I'm too worried about if anything I'm quite happy with where it all sits and I think the slideshows reflect that as well. The word bonus is the only thing that might bug me a bit. 
um, bonus. And we'll re re rearrange it a little bit, but it's, other than that, it's, it's fine. These things are essentially the same. Modify bonus. And are we almost there? This this needs to change. I don't want to just have these because I think we we talked about skills and broadening this out. So I'm going to go. No, that's not what I'm going to do. Whoops. I'm going to go. Highlight. I'm not going to do that here though, and I'm certainly not going to do it today. And the same thing with this one. Having them related to the different um, abilities, I don't think that needs to be in a slideshow at all. Okay. This here, let's go bonus. And I'm happy with that. Um, and the other things are all right. The only thing here is this. This is probably not going to cover everything that I've discussed today. Uh, I need to add in a few things, don't I? Uh, but I can't do that with the space that I've presented myself with, so I have to shrink things down a little bit. And what was the first thing that we had after this? We had advantage, disadvantage, contest, DC, contests, um, difficulty numbers, uh, contests, armor, advantage, disadvantage, attack roll, saving throws, fine with all of that, uh, mostly, uh, re-roll game mechanics, Wanted to add that one and uh, diceless. Diceless mechanics, diceless, diceless game mechanics. And it's too, too big, so we'll shrink it again. And the last one is um, different dice for resolution. And the formatting is out. But I'm out of time. I'm not going to be coming back to this. Um, I will tidy up all of this some other time. Uh, probably not in a live stream though. I think that all that I wanted to work through was here, and it's done today. I'm getting rid of this off my head because I can't cope with it anymore. <laughs> um, so I'm going to probably come back two more times doing something like this for basic combat and complex combat. So I'll do this two more times for them, and then after that, in about three weeks, we're into covering specific game mechanics for specific game systems. Okay. Um, there are a few that I know of and that I can actually show you, not just explain, but I can show you, so I'll do them. Um, we'll, we'll do that for sure. That's uh, where my head is at for today. Uh, all right, so I think now is a good time to go over here, close up this poll. We open the package. Volcano alert for New Zealand. Is there? Is there a volcano alert for New Zealand? Oh, hopefully there isn't. It won't be a very um, fun, funny um, joke, unfortunately, if it's if it's real, because um, it would probably be in the Auckland area. Taupo, really? Spirit Wolf, are you kidding me? Taupo is under alert for a volcano. Oh my gosh. I can I can believe it. Um, and we know it's coming. We know we're going to have a major volcano, and it won't be offshore. Um, but that's uh, that's pretty kind of terrifying. <laughs> okay, I'll check on that a little bit later. Hey, I just want to say thank you to all of my patrons, everybody who hung out today uh, in the live chat, uh, commented, took part in the polls, or just watched. You know, I, I do thank you for doing that. It, it, I do appreciate the fact that you did show up. I know this is a little bit strange for what I normally do, but trust me, eventually things will get significantly better than what we're doing now. Because really this is me sort of doing my homework, you might say. 
So um, so wherever you are, so wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, you know what I'm going to say. Look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those twenties. Uh, yes, I am covering Advanced Dungeons and Dragons First Ed Edition Player's Handbook tomorrow. Early. 10 a.m. New Zealand time. Yeah, there would be no DM in New Zealand that is the most famous. <laughs> I don't think.